In the second part of this topic, we are going to consider how to compute uh, the, 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 the time derivatives of a vector functions with respect to different uh, reference rings, one fixed to the earth and one subjected to rotations around a fixed point. As we previously indicated, we are going to consider as a way of example the movement of the rat that, that escapes from the carousels uh, along the, the straight line represented by this vector. And we are going to, uh, to consider how the velocity and deceleration of this rat is related as seen from the moving reference range represented by this uh, person that is rotating with the carousel and also with a fixed reference range represented by this person that is fixed to the, fixed to the earth. In what follows, we are going to consider the vector function beta and we are going to find the, the time derivatives of this vector function with respect to the fixed reference frames and with respect to the moving reference frames. First, we are going to see that the uh, uh, vector function beta is given by the following way. Px the, by the, uh, I, the unit vector i plus, plus by by the unit vector j plus uh, b theta uh, with respect to the uh, unit vector k. One of the important things is that the components b beta x, beta y, and beta c are uh, scalar components. And the time derivatives of the scalar components are not dependent of the reference frames that we are, uh, we are going to use to derive. Uh, other, the, in the other hand, the time derivatives of the unit vectors i, j, and k are going to be different depending on with, res, with respect to the reference frame that we're going to take the time derivative. First, we are going to consider the time derivative of the uh, function vector beta with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frames. That in this particular case is going to be uh, O1, X1, Y1, C1. This is going to be equal to the time derivative of Bx I plus Byj plus uh, B theta K. Okay. And we are going to uh, to derive in the following way. First, we're going to uh, derive the scalar components. In this particular case, this is going to be the time derivative of Bx with respect to time, with respect to O, 1, X1, Y1, C1, times A, Ti, plus the time derivative of beta Y with respect to time and with respect to the reference frame the moving reference frames O, X1, Y1, C1 times the unit vector J plus the time derivative of beta theta with respect to time and with respect to the reference, moving reference frames O1, X1, Y1, C1 times the unit vector K. Uh, now we have to consider uh, the time derivatives of the unit vectors. In this particular case, this is going to be equal to Bx by the time derivative of unit vector uh, i with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference range, O, X1, Y1, C1, plus uh, By by the time derivative of the unit vector j with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frames O, X1, Y1, C1, plus uh, beta theta, uh, uh, the time derivative of the unit vector K with respect to time, and the O1, X1, Y1, C1. Okay? That will be the complete expressions. However, we have to notice that the unit vectors i, a, j, and k are fixed to the moving body represented by the reference frames O1, X1, Y1, C1. Therefore, 
this, all these time derivatives are going to be equal to zero. And the final result uh, is that the time derivative of the uh, vector function beta with respect to time and with respect to the ref moving reference frame O x1, y1, c1 is going to be given exactly by, by the upper part of the equation that is going to be given by the uh, time derivative of bx with respect to O1, x1, y1, c1 times i plus the time derivative of beta y with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frame plus the time derivative of beta c with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frame O x1, y1, c1 times k. Now we are going to consider the time derivative of the vector function beta with respect to the fixed reference frames. For that effect uh, we are going to write the following equations. The time derivative of beta with respect to time and with respect to the uh, fixed reference frames O, X, Y, C is going to be the time derivative with respect to time. Uh, 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 I'm w one excuse, I forgot to write in these equations the, the reference frames with respect to, win, to which I am taking the time derivative. Uh, over here, the time derivative is going to be with respect to the fixed reference frame that is going to be O, X, Y, C. And over here should be V, X, I plus V, Y, J plus beta c k. Okay. Now we are going to proceed in the same in the same way. First we are going to derive the scalar components and this is going to be the time derivative of B, uh, beta x with respect to time with respect to the fixed reference frame times i plus the time derivative of beta y with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame times the j unit vector plus uh, the time derivative of beta c with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame times the unit vector k. Okay. However, in this particular case we, are, we, we need to add also the time derivative of the unit vectors. Is, is, this is to say that you are going to write beta x times the, in the time derivative of the unit vector i with respect to the fixed reference frame plus beta y, the time derivative of the unit vector j with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame plus the time derivative of beta c, the, uh, excuse me, beta c by the time derivative of unit vector k with respect to time and with respect to O, X, Y, C. Okay? However, uh, in, uh, contrary to the first case, in this particular case, the time derivatives of the unit vectors i, j, and k are not going to be equal to zero. Why? Because uh, the unit vectors i, y, and k are fixed to the moving body and the moving body is subjected to a rotational movement. Therefore, we need uh, this, this time derivatives are going to be different from zero and we need to calculate. Now, we, not, we now to, uh, need to compute the time derivatives of the unit vectors i, j, k with respect to the fixed reference frames. One simple way of, of thinking of these time derivatives is the following. We can assume that there is a particle located at the tip of the unit vectors i, j, and k. And this should be, assuming that these unit vectors, it should be located in a, a sphere with center on point O and radius equal to 1. 
if, if we assume that i, j, and k are the position vectors of these particles, then the time derivatives of these, express, the, of these unit vectors are going to be quite simple. Is there are going to be the, the derivatives, uh, there are going to be simply the angular velocity of the rigid body times the unit vector. And the same for the, all the others. The time derivatives of j with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame is going to be equal to the angular velocity of the rigid body times the unit vector j. And finally, the time derivative of k with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame is going to be equal to the uh, angular velocity vector times the unit vector k. Using these results, uh, we, are, we can, well, using these results and also noting that, the, that these derivatives of the scalar components are independent of the reference frame, we have the following. We have that uh, the time derivative of beta x with respect to time and with respect to the fixed to the moving reference frame is going to be equal to the time derivative of beta x with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame. The same for the other components of the vector, uh, vector function beta. By with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frame is going to be equal to the time derivative of uh, beta y with respect to time and with respect to the, uh, to the fixed reference frame. And finally, the time derivative of beta c with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frame is going to be equal to the time derivative of beta theta, beta c with respect to time and with respect to O, X, Y, C. Okay? Combining those results, we can obtain the following result. The time derivative of the vector function with respect to time and with respect to the fixed reference frame, this expression is going to be equal to this expression. And this expression is equal to that one. Therefore, this is going to be equal to the time derivative of the vector function beta with respect to time and with respect to the moving reference frame plus this expression that is going to be equal to v beta x times w or times the unit vector y plus a beta y times uh, a um, the, the angular velocity uh, cross product the unit vector j and finally plus b theta uh, times the angular velocity cross product the unit vector k this can be further simplified if, if one notice that this expression can be written in the following way In the first term, doesn't change, but the second term can be written as follows. Can be written as W cross product, the vector W cross product beta x times i plus beta y times j plus beta c times k. And finally, the expressions that we are looking for is going to be given by the following way. The time derivative, the time derivative of, the, of the vector function with respect to the fixed reference frames is going to be equal to the time derivative of the same vector function with respect to the moving reference frame times the angular velocity of the body by the vector function. Okay. This is the expression that we were looking for, and we are going to consider uh, different, different situations about the vector function beta. 
In some cases, the vector function can be taught as the position vector of a particle of the rigid body. In some other cases, can be taught as the, the, the velocity of a particle of the rigid body. And in some other cases, can be also taught as the angular velocity of, this, of, the, rigid, of, the, of the moving rigid body. Okay? All these results will be very interesting in order to, 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 uh, to obtain the relationship between velocities and accelerations of a particle as seen from two different reference frames, the fixed reference frames and the moving reference frames.